From NPR.org, Supreme Court rules that about half of Oklahoma is Native American land by Laurel Wamsley. The Supreme Court ruled Thursday that about half of the land in Oklahoma is within a Native American reservation, a decision that will have major consequences for both past and future criminal and civil cases. The court's decision hinged on the question of whether the Creek Reservation continued to exist after Oklahoma became a state. Justice Neil Gorsuch, in the majority opinion, wrote, Today we are asked whether the land these treaties promised remains an Indian reservation for purposes of federal criminal law. Because Congress has not said otherwise, we hold the government to its word. Now, <laughs> wow, right? And and this is this is an issue that is uh, you know not just near and dear to my heart from my personal experience having attended the Native American prep school as the one white kid there, but just as, as someone who has a decent perspective on American history, some and, and any any of you any anybody who knows the history of of the treatment of Native Americans. Has got to be just a, shockingly embarrassed when you step back and you look at the scope, the scale of the evil and destructiveness that all all of America's federal uh, Indian policy represented, and to look at the current situation today and not see, holy crap, this is a, a huge injustice that needs to end. Like we can't just and to me it's. It's similar to the veteran suicides issue, although even with 22 veterans committing suicide a day, that's kind of insignificant compared to the atrocities that the Native American community in communities in, in this country have experienced. And similarly, it's just a sort of obvious policy thing that's a national embarrassment that we're just kind of like afraid to get around to. As a, I mean, it's a really weird sort of national psychological phenomena that most Americans have heard of these issues. Most Americans are at least vaguely aware that there are still huge problems associated with federal Native American policy. Now, this is coming from the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court says, we hold the government to its word, Justice Neil Gorsuch in his majority opinion. We hold the government to its word. Was the Supreme Court around at the time of Wounded Knee? The Trail of Tears? Oh, yeah. Did they want to hold the government to its word then? No. <laughs> no. Of course not. What does the Supreme Court represent? I mean, and, and again, you have to understand what the Constitution represents, today's Constitution, as opposed to the actual legal Constitution of the United States, the Articles of Confederation, which were illegally displaced in a coup by the Constitutional Convention and all the bullying about getting states to ratify the current Constitution. So what is the purpose of the Supreme Court? It's kind of similar to the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is not there to protect your rights. <laughs> it's a nice illusion, right? <laughs> Words on paper, no. What was the Bill of Rights really? It was a means of appeasing people who objected to the creation of the strong central authority. Hey, give us this power. <laughs> give us this, this power to do all these evil, unethical things like maintain a standing army, tax you, have a system of intellectual property, to, to have a money monopoly, uh, to, 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 to endorse slavery. Right, the for the original Constitution, three fifths. Black Americans counted, or slaves counted, as three fifths of a person. Okay, we don't want to hold people to that. You know, all men are created equal. Part so the role of the Supreme Court, similarly, uh, as an arbiter among government agents, serves a role in maintaining the strength of government in terms of putting a check on government power. Is that, does it ever really want to do that? Only 
when the rest of the government gets carried away, right? And really, as a criminal organization, the United States federal government is constantly trying to get away with this and get away with that. And, you know, as, as, as we know, the limits of oppression are determined by the tolerance of the oppressed. What will we tolerate? Well, we'll tolerate a lot more when the government can use the Supreme Court as its excuse. Oh, no, no, look, we've got the Bill of Rights, and if we screw up, the Supreme Court's going to hold us accountable. It's okay. You can have your day in court. You get wronged by a government agent. You, you can take your case all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court will interpret the Constitution and it's on the side of the people, and it will put the government in check. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so what do we see today when Justice Gorsuch says we're going to hold the government to its word? What is this really a reflection of? The fact that the paradigm has shifted, that even with this convoluted system of false accountability, at this point, we would not, as the American people, tolerate the Supreme Court actively saying, oh, yeah, you know those treaties? Nah, forget about them. Now, it's not as simple as a single conscientious entity, like a single person. Like the Supreme Court is nine human beings. You know, I'm trying to deny the reality of government itself. It is, it is human beings. It is people with hopes and dreams and fears and, and worries and, and aspirations and, and love and families, right? You know, these are all people. These are all human beings. You know, uh, hate the game, not the player, right? Don't, don't blame the individuals when you can blame the behavior. And nothing they're doing is uniquely made possible by the evil of these individuals. So this decision was five to four, very split decision with Justices Gorsuch, Sotomayor, Ginsburg, Hagan, and Breyer in the majority, while Justices Roberts, that's the Chief Justice, Kavanaugh, Alito, and Thomas dissented. The ruling will have significant legal implications for Eastern Oklahoma, much of Tulsa, the state's second largest city is located on Muskogee land. That's Creek Tribe. The Muskogee Creek Nation sheared the court's decision. Quote from the uh, tribe in a statement, the Supreme Court today kept the United States sacred promise to the Muskogee Nation of a protected reservation. Today's decision will allow the nation to honor our ancestors by maintaining our established sovereignty and territorial boundaries. In a dissenting opinion, Roberts, the Chief Justice, wrote that the decision will undermine numerous convictions obtained by the state, as well as the state's ability to prosecute serious crimes committed in the future and may destabilize governance of vast swaths of Oklahoma. Good! Kevin Washburn is the Dean of the Law School at the University of Iowa, where he teaches a course on federal Indian law. It's basically 15 weeks of how the law in the United States has failed my people, he said. He served as Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs from 2012 to 16, and he's a citizen of the Chickasaw Nation of Oklahoma. He called the court's ruling a great decision. For Indian people, their land is really important, and treaties are really important. They're sacred, and this reaffirms the sacredness of those promises and those treaties. Now and then there's a great case that helps you keep the faith about the rule of law, and this is one of those. Now, I <laughs> faith about the rule, I, ugh, hmm, maybe I, hmm, keep faith about the rule of law? You know you live in America, right? This is, this is a lawless country where government is able to violate the natural law, individual rights, the constitution that it claims is its authority every single day. Government isn't law and order. Government is chaos. Government is criminality and disorder. And of course, taxation being theft, we know that the government is stealing from us continuously. So the fact that it stopped 
its nonstop raping and pillaging of America to do the right thing for a second. Mm. I don't have any faith about the rule of law to keep in the first place, sir. The first implication and consequences for criminal law is that certain major crimes committed within the boundaries of reservations must be prosecuted in federal court rather than state court if a Native American is involved. So if a Native American is accused of a major crime in downtown Tulsa, the federal government rather than the state government will prosecute it. Less serious crimes involving Native Americans on American Indian land will be handled in tribal courts. This arrangement is already common in Western states like Arizona, New Mexico, and Montana, said Washburn. So I'm on, on, on behalf of Native Americans right now, I would never say that. Uh, but you know, if I'm I'm kind of embarrassed that that you speak of sovereignty and autonomy in a situation where it is so clearly not respected. Native American reservations are sovereign in name only. They are granted certain privileges by the government of which they are a subsidiary that some call bits of sovereignty, tokens of autonomy, I, I don't know. But it's not sovereignty. It's not autonomy. It's not. And within these tribal organizations, there's been massive corruption uh, within tribal governments throughout the United States. And I don't blame natives. They, they were doing pretty well before the Europeans got here in terms of governance. They, they you know... Uh, we won't draw the comparisons there. You can argue that either way. I get it. So today, that corruption and just the stuff that we see in tribal governments, you know, how easy is it to take over a foreign government for the United States, right? The federal government of the United States, the CIA, the FBI, excuse me, just really the CIA State Department. The coups, the color revolutions, the Arab Spring, When you have overwhelming force and finances, it's easy to take over a political process in another country, let alone your little tribal enclaves in America. And even if there hasn't been, although knowing the history of the FBI and COINTELPRO, I'd be shocked if there isn't, right? But there hasn't, but even if there hasn't been, just the creation of the legal structure of reservations as not sovereign units has meant that the natives, the real heroes of native rights, the, the leaders in their communities often don't end up as leaders of these European style governments. So, you know, why am I covering this? I mean, not only is it you know, hugely significant for the people in Oklahoma, for Native Americans all across America who do seek to assert their sovereignty and independence from the federal government of the United States. But also that it seems to represent, well, significant shift in government accountability. Why would a Supreme Court justice say we're going to hold the government to its word? Did he suddenly get a conscience? Excuse me. That's unnecessarily insulting language. Did Gorsuch suddenly grow a full-sized healthy conscience? Better? Right. Okay. Because uh, clearly he doesn't have enough of a conscience to prevent him from all doing all the things that led to him becoming a Supreme Court justice. You don't get to be a Supreme Court justice by standing up against this evil system and doing the right thing. No, you get it by being a consistent bootlicker for the course of your career. And then if, if, if you if you kiss enough butts and and suck on the right genitals, you're welcome, YouTube. Then you might, you might be in the running to be a Supreme Court justice. And to be 
in a position for life. So back to the story, implications. Then there's the issue of past decisions. Many of them are now considered wrongful convictions because the state lacked jurisdiction. A number of criminal defendants who have been convicted in the past will now have grounds to challenge their convictions, arguing that the state never had jurisdiction to try them. <clears throat> so I'm excited about this now as government making things harder for itself, right? And, you know, they're going to find some loophole here. Uh, you know, are they going to suddenly let out a bunch of murderers and rapists from jails in Oklahoma? Oh, whoops, we didn't, we didn't have the jurisdiction. Oh, shoot. You know, no, that's obviously not what's going to happen. But that they're raising that as, you know, as the, the specter of fear here. And, you know, it's, it's true that that, that that might happen. But, hey, in the coronaphobia crisis, we've seen a lot crazier stuff happen, including at least hundreds of inmates being released from life sentences to home arrest, to house arrest. Wow. So if this leads to that, you know, I'm, I'm, when I, when the government does good things for criminal justice, right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say let's undo those things. If, if they're locking up people who should be locked up or a threat, you know, then it would be bad if, by some legal quirk, they released them. But if they did that, that again, it would be, well, we need more power. The case before the court, to the root of why this is happening now, McGirt versus Oklahoma concerned Jim C. McGirt, an enrolled member of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, who was convicted of sex crimes against a child on Creek land. In post-conviction proceedings, McGirt argued that the state lacked jurisdiction in the case and that he must be retried in federal court. The high court agreed. So like in, in, in cases like this, if someone is in custody, I, I don't know in this case, you know, but if it was like someone's a, on trial for murder, you're not going to be released. They're just going to have another hearing in federal court that says, oh, denied bail. The ruling will affect lands of the Muskegee and four other Oklahoma tribes with identical treaties. Civil court issues are also affected. It, it's important to note that the case concerned jurisdiction, not land ownership. So this is another tricky part of this, right? Like it's just the legal implications in criminal cases, right? Are there do the Native Americans suddenly get to retake Tulsa? Mm, no. Ruling that these lands are in fact reservations, quote, doesn't mean the tribe owns all the land within the reservation. It's like the county doesn't own all the land within the county. In fact, it probably doesn't own very much of that land. That's not what a reservation is these days. Washburn compares a reservation to a county terms that describe jurisdictional boundaries. Well, if that's the case, though, a county can say, well, we're revoking a city charter. I don't know if it's a state thing, maybe. Well, but they can say, no, this is county jurisdiction. And, you know, we're kicking you out of the county. If they really wanted to do that, they could. But they don't have that sovereignty, let alone ownership. Oklahoma Attorney General Mike Hunter released a joint statement with the Muskegee Creek Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw, and Seminole nations on Thursday, indicating that they have made substantial progress toward an agreement to present to Congress and the U.S. Department of Justice addressing and resolving any significant jurisdictional issues. Now, now which, which of the natives are doing this? And I'm sure they're great people standing up for the rights of their community. But it's not that the sitting bulls it's not the warriors who fought on principle for native rights, who fought against the genocide. It's the ones who can fill out the forms and do the paperwork now. Ian Heath Gershengorn, an attorney at Jenner and Block, argued McGirt's case before the Supreme Court. He said his team was thrilled with the results and it felt optimistic knowing that Gorsuch could prove to be the deciding vote. Gorsuch joined with the court's more liberal members in the decision prior to his appointment to the high court. Gorsuch was a judge on the 10th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, which frequently, frequently sees cases involving Native American lands. As Gershon Gordon said, quote, Justice Gorsuch is made very clear in a short time on the bench that he takes the text deeply seriously. And I think you saw that the core of his analysis today was a textual one. We felt like we had the right argument at the right time for the right justice. And because those factors came together against the backdrop of 
current American public opinion and accountability and historical perspective made possible by the internet, the government, in this one little small way, did the right thing. I'm more excited for pulling much, much further in this direction. And I hope that the warriors of these native communities, those who stand on principle, will continue to fight not just for jurisdictional rights, but true tribal sovereignty, which every tribe in America deserves.